Here on Bike Fit Tuesdays, we're quite big fans of running cleats far back on the shoe. But what about midfoot cleat position? What's it all about? What are the pros and cons? That's what today's video is about. What are you doing? Drilling a shoe. I mean, it's exactly as it sounds, isn't it? So it's getting the cleat placement much more towards the middle of the foot, to the center of the foot. Shoe design tends to originate the cleat around the ball of the foot and the first metatarsal through these delicate toe bones. The concept of midfoot cycling is to get the cleat further back to take the, the, the pressure away from the delicate structure of the forefoot. So if you consider that this is a lever, it's comprised of almost 30 bones, they're very, very small, it's a very mobile appendage, and in cycling what we're trying to do is utilize it as a lever. So one of the functions of a cycling shoe is to sort of lock the foot out and turn it into an effective lever. As you take the cleat closer to the uh, to the ankle joint, which is where typically a lot of instability tends to occur, then what you're doing is effectively reducing the leverage of, of the foot, which in turn tends to improve stability through the ankle. This in turn improves stability through the knees, the hips and the pelvis. Uh, to that end, actually, we found by taking cleats further back on the shoes, we can actually dramatically influence pressure going through the saddle. There is an argument for taking cleats further back, is midfoot too far back? Shoe design in cycling, in my opinion, is pretty archaic. Uh, there hasn't really been much of a development in, certainly in terms of cleat placement over the last few years, has, in my opinion, always been a little bit too far forward. There are some brands that are further back than others and represent best of the bad bunch. Lake is a very good example. I have a very uh, good relationship with Lake. Um, I feel the cleat location is still further forward than I would like it. There are really, as far as we're aware, only two ways of taking your cleats further back on the shoe. The first is to take a drill to it, which personally I wouldn't recommend. And one of the problems with drilling a hole in the shoe is that when if, a lot of shoes, if you take a Lake shoe like this, which has uh, a reasonable amount of forefoot drop, as you're taking that cleat further and further back, actually what you're going to do is you're going to start deforming the cleat so the cleat isn't actually going to engage in the pedal. Uh, so I personally would discourage you from drilling holes in your shoes. This was the fact, you're writing off a really nice, but potentially writing off a really nice pair of shoes. Potentially the best remedy is a, uh, a company called uh, midfootcycling.com, I think they're called Midfoot Cycling. Uh, they basically, they build these, these extender plates which allow you to get the cleats I, th I think it's around 20 millimeters further back, so further back towards the, uh, towards the midfoot. This is a very effective means of getting your cleats further back. One thing I will say is that, uh, just while we're on the subject of where the cleat placement is going to be, if your shoes are too big for you, your cleat, cleat location is going to be further forward. Furthermore, not all cleat placement is created equal. Physique shoes, for instance, have a cleat placement that is about 15 millimeters further forward than pretty much everything else on the market. Uh, there are some other brands that tend to have a more rearward cleat placement. Lake's kind of one of them. Uh, Bont definitely has a much more rearward cleat, uh, cleat placement and typically a much flatter sole as well, which for certain, indiv certain individuals actually isn't a great thing, but uh, it does allow a more rearward cleat placement. My point is that if you are sizing up the shoe to accommodate a wide foot, for instance, you're going to end up with the cleat location significantly further forward than you probably ought, than it probably ought to be. So you've got a, 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 a steel or alloy plate. It's it's quite similar to the uh, the speed plate four aft extender plate that no longer exists thanks to the idiots of Wahoo. You have a steel plate that bolts the existing ho cleat holes of the shoe. You then bolt the cleat to that plate and it allows you to get the cleat significantly further back on the shoe. First and foremost, you take a lot of pressure away from the forefoot, which has got a very dense capillary structure. It's a, it's a relatively mobile part of the foot. Uh, and in turn, you tend to improve stability. You also take it close to the subtalar complex, which again, in turn, improves stability. So one could argue that by improving stability at the foot, you're gonna improve stability further up the kinetic chain through the knees, the hips, and the pelvis. One negative, I would say, from a, from a biomechanics standpoint, is that it is going to impinge the hip. So it's going to impinge the hip through the top of the stroke and make it more difficult to get through the top of the stroke. So I would argue that a midfoot cleat placement should be carried out in combination of, first and foremost, a lower saddle height, because as you take the cleat further back on the foot, you're effectively increasing the extension or the reach to the pedal axle. I would also potentially be reducing the crank length as a means of enabling the rider to get over the top of the stroke more easily, thanks to the impingement that, or the, the possible impingement that a midfoot cleat placement might create. 
so aero. I'm so aero. This is what you see like 90% of people riding around in Richmond Park and doing bang. Their shifters are like, like Oh yeah, like, shifters are all yeah. There we go, that's better, yeah. I don't talk about aerodynamics very much because it's something that I can't quantify and prove. I don't have a wind tunnel on here unless I make you stand there and fart a lot. A it's predominantly hypothetical, uh, especially in, in this environment where we don't have a wind tunnel and we can't prove any of, the, any of the, the findings. Many would argue that if you take the human being lower to the ground, you will improve their ability to adopt a more aerodynamic position. Two thirds of a, of a rider's frontal area is the human body themselves. So if you can reduce the size of the human being, then uh, you're gonna make it more aerodynamic. With a midfoot cleat placement, you are going to run the saddle really quite a lot lower, uh, to, as in lower to the ground, which means in turn, the frontal area of the individual potentially will reduce. A midfoot cleat placement makes a hell of a lot of sense for triathletes, uh, particularly triathletes of a more endurance orientated nature. So if you're doing 70.3 in Ironman, running the cleat further back will help uh, offload the calf muscles, the, the, the gastrox, and which in turn will tend to keep you a lot fresher for the run. So if you think about the calf muscles, they're a stabilizing muscle. If they're not having to be activated to stabilize the foot through the pedal stroke, then they're gonna be kept, kept a lot fresher for the run. For a triathlete standpoint, I mean, I would be getting the cleat as far back as possible, almost. This is toe overlap. And to be honest, there ain't a great deal of it there, is there with you? And this is, this is a, a, a size 42 lake with a midfoot cycling cleat adapter, run as far back as possible, and you're running what, 42 seat tire? You're gonna go at toe overlap on almost any road bike. It typically is a problem that presents itself at very low speed. Road bikes aren't intended to be ridden at low speed. I'm talk when I say low speed, I'm talking about meandering through traffic. Any midfoot cleat placement isn't an ideal solution for commuting, but that's not really what we're talking about here. I think that toe overlap, uh, yes, of course, as you take the cleat further back, you, in, you inherently move the foot further forward, so toe overlap is going to become more of a concern. I feel like due to the, uh, the, the suing nature of Americans, most American bike manufacturers tend to be really alien retentive about toe overlap. I personally feel it's a non-issue uh, because realistically, you're not gonna be pedaling at very, a lot of people aren't gonna be pedaling at very low speeds, but it does depend on the geometry of the bike. So for instance, my commuting bike, uh, my faithful old Pearson has got a, a very, very slack head angle and a lot of fork rake, which takes the front wheel very far away from the bottom bracket, which in turn means that I don't have any toe overlap. Uh, furthermore, I have got shorts cranks on it as well. So there are lots of things that will come into play that will influence toe overlap. Frame geometry, uh, obviously the size of the shoe or the size of the rider's foot, where the cleats are placed on the shoe, crank length, head angle, the fork rake, the size of the tire, whether you're running mud guards or not. Do you see what I mean? There's a lot of different drivers here that will potentially influence tire overlap. So you need to take into consideration all of those things before worrying about it too much in terms of uh, where you're gonna place your cleats. Is midfoot cleat placement a good thing? I think it depends on the specific needs of an individual. Uh, it can be a very good means of offsetting uh, heavy pronation and helping stabilize an unstable foot. Uh, I must admit that I have never felt the need to take a cleat as far back as this. For instance, these cleat adapters in the studio right now, I removed from a rider's shoes because frankly, he'd been using them uh, on a pair of shoes that were a size or two too big and had used the cleat placement, the cleat adapter to get the cleat further back. I think the moral of the story there is, if your shoes are wrong, fix the problem. Don't try and apply a band-aid solution to it. So if you're trying to, if your cleat location is too far forward on the shoe, consider whether the shoe is correct or not for the, in, in the first place. Remember what we said earlier in the video about different shoe brands having different cleat placements. Secondly, I think for a specific application, yes, I think cleat, uh, a midfoot cleat placement 
can can pay dividends. Uh, certainly with regards to triathletes, certainly with regards to uh, ultra endurance riders, anywhere, any individual who's going to be on the bike for extended periods of time, there's a very, very strong argument for taking the cleat further back. I think it's about time that shoe brands started to step up and really start thinking about where they're placing their cleats uh, because it's still stuck in the 1970s and revolving around the first mess tarsal and ball of the foot. That marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. If you want to book a fit with James, there'll be a link down below to his shop. And if you have any questions for James, put them in the comment section down below and he'll do his best to answer them when he gets off his phone. He's on Tinder. <laughs>